whatever game plan Coach Joe Mazzula had for the Miami Heat in game two, I need him to take it, ball it up, throw it in the trash. The Miami Heat shredded the Boston Celtics last night, and there was nothing they can do about it. 23 three-pointers. What, what's going on? Now we have a series. Now we have a series, and the Miami Heat made the Boston Celtics look pedestrian. I'm sorry. Because, <laughs> like, are they really the number one, the best team, number one seed overall? Did they really achieve that this, this season? Because last night <laughs> looked like they should have been um, in the playing tournament. <laughs> like, oh, wow. It was horrible. And I'm telling you, See, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about, and I think this this is an indicator of what the Boston Celtics look like at the end of every series, especially when they reach the finals, right? It's this it's this meltdown of sorts. I'm like, what happened? Ooh, one thing you can always count on for the Boston Celtics is they're going to be inconsistent. They're going to let you back in the game if you're out of it. Something about the fourth quarter. However, last night's game was complete domination by the, by the Miami Heat. I mean, it, it, they didn't even – the Boston Celtics didn't even put up a fight to me. I, I didn't see it. It was like – no, I agree with you. And it was like they said, you know what, y'all can have this one. You can have this one. We'll give you this one because we checked out. Like, but how are you going to check out at home? You can't do that. That's your house. They came mm. in and zoned deep in you to death, and you didn't know what to do about it. <laughs> y'all couldn't even figure it out why can't you figure it out who who on the coaching staff for the Boston Celtics didn't figure out how to get around their zone who, who, did, who did it, who didn't do it who didn't do their homework oh, oh all them coaches, all them assistant coaches sitting in there with the same, looking like um, all them twins, they got the same uniform on, same shirt, nobody knew nothing everybody was mute I'm like, Mm-mm. not the number one seed no, uh uh-uh. uh uh, yeah, this series does not look like a one versus eight. Not this series. Not at all. But, you know, this is what the Miami Heat does. Eric Spolster always flexes his muscle against the opposing coach. And just like last season, this is a repeat. And I hope doubt is not creeping into the minds of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and all the others because I think that's a natural that's a natural progression, right? Be like, oh, here we go again. No, here you go again. And however, it is game two, right? And we do understand that there are seven games to this series. So I will give the Boston Celtics some grace and have them say, okay, let's regroup. Because you're going to mess around and look like an out in round one. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? No. no. And- if that happened, blow up the Boston Celtics. Because ain't no way. No way. But I can tell you right now, this was coaching finesse. This is experienced coaching based off of inexperienced coaching. That's exactly what that was. Because if you look on the sideline, if you look at um, Coach Missoula, he looked deflated. Or defaced. What's the word? Deflated. I was like, how you going to look sad? Where's your motivation? I was like, "Mm -mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah. The Miami Heat could not miss from three shots. 53%. From the three-point line, I mean, everybody was lighting them up. And Caleb Martin looked like he took this personal for some reason. Uh-huh. Because that's the thing, though. If you're, you, you, I, don't think you can, I don't think you can be the team that's 23 three-pointers and you can barely make two. I mean, what? Yeah, you. Uh-huh. So they was bound to win anyway, but that defense that they had, oh, the Miami Heat defense? It showed up last <laughs> night. Yes, and remember, if you if you uh, listen to Tyler Hero at the end of the game when he was speaking with, I don't know what the lady name or whatever, he was speaking with her, and, and he said that um, Jimmy Butler called him. I told you in a previous discussion that Tyler Hero is going to have to be the leader. Didn't I say that? I you said, did. Exactly. I said it. So Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo did all of that. That's exactly what I was expecting from them. I wanted to see that from them. Right? They have to take it over. They can't rely on Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler has already given you guys a blueprint. Now you just need to execute. From a leadership standpoint, right? Uh huh. Wow. Yeah, Tyler. Tyler was deep in his bag. But wait, but wait though. Jalen Brown. I mean, if you look at the box score, him and Jason Tatum, they scored the ball pretty well, right? Thirty-three points for Jalen, twenty-eight points for uh, Jason Tatum. But what happened was nobody else showed up for the Boston Celtics. 
Nobody. At home. Nobody showed up. You know, a friend of mine uh, grew up in Boston, Massachusetts, and she's a big Celtics fan. She said, I'm so embarrassed. I'm ready to shut this TV off right now. That's <laughs> that's what they're, that's what they're dealing with right now. And now you got to go I to was, South Beach and try yeah. to get a win. Because you, if you go down, <laughs> hey, if Miami mess around and protect home court and go up 3-1 in this series, it's it a is a wrap. Yeah, It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Matter of fact, they would have been better off doing what they did in game two for game three because people could have you – can, you can justify, you know, a, an away loss in a series. You know, it was the first time that they were in Miami for the series. It makes sense that they would lose game three. Then I can get, a, I can get on board with that. Game two at home? No. Number one seed? Uh-uh. Without Jimmy Butler, make it make sense. Uh-uh. Right. Okay. All right. So the Miami Heat tied the series with a victory, one eleven to one hundred one. But then there was another game last night, and I was so disappointed in the New Orleans Pelicans. They didn't know what to do with OKC Thunder. Why can't Brandon Ingram bring us the same type of heat every single game? Why is he inconsistent this season? I know he was injured, missed a ton of games, but how? I mean, he played terrible in the play-in game, right, against the Lakers, then he played well in the game to secure the eighth seed. Then he played terrible in this game. Like, what, what's up with the up and down? Why I got to be on a roller coaster with Brandon Ingram right now? You know, Matt, because OKC still said this is uh, – we're going to run this. I, I'm just ecstatic, actually. Oklahoma City Thunder look like juggernauts out there. I said, y'all better get it. Mm. I am here for it. And, you know, uh, the Pelicans – Totally don't look ready, and if we're and unfortunately, as you mentioned, if if they're relying on Brandon Ingram to bring them home, I'm gonna need somebody else to do it. CJ, you've been here, done that. Where you at? Mm. CJ, been there, done that. Apparently, right? Come on now. And see, this is gonna happen. They're gonna go game three, and Brandon Ingram gonna show up, and then game four he won't. He almost he's almost fitting the same bill as Anthony Davis. Remember oh, last season, yes, the up and yes. downs of Anthony Davis? Brandon Ingram is giving me that same type of piece. Uh-huh. Ah, sometimes he looks interested in the game, sometimes not. I just need to know what is it that sparks him because when he plays well, the New Orleans Pelicans play well together, and then you don't have to rely on CJ as much. Maybe Trey Murphy the third can get going, you know, Herb Jones, and we didn't get any of that last night. No, I, I don't know what happened. Were they extremely tired? Were they homesick? Because OKC said, not not, not in this house. You won't do it here. You're not going to do it here. Uh-uh. Oh. You see the finesse of Shea Gil- That's Shea Gilgis Alexander. I, I coined it at the top of the season. He was going to be somebody this year. I knew it. I felt yes. it in my bones. And now he has proven everything. Number, he's like on the ballot for most improved players. What? Yeah, what? most improved clutch player, MVP. You, uh, you just pick one. I mean, golly. You just pick one. Like, he is yeah. so crafty. He's so good. Now, will he win most valuable player for this year? I don't think so. But to be nominated, to be top three, what? Yeah, yeah, it says a lot. And his leadership, though, that's what I love most. And their chemistry, I love, love when after the game, when they're all interviewing, yeah, they all come and they start barking, <laughs> start barking and all that. I think that is all so of them. They are they, they do it consistently. You're not just about to interview Shay. You're gonna you're gonna see all our faces. I love I love it. And they do it all the time. And Jay Williams, let me tell you, superstar in the making. That Jay Williams got the the, the strength and the finesse and the skills. A couple mm-hmm. of more years, he's gonna be up there. I'm telling you, I am so impressed. With everything that Oklahoma City Thunder has to offer, I am so impressed. I'm just, I'm waiting to see them in the next round. I'm, I'm done with the Pelicans. Y'all can kick rocks. I'm ready for the next round. So, um, okay, see, was too much for them. Uh, yep. 124, the 92 last night. <laughs> it, it, it was just a master class. So now they're up two <laughs> games to zero. And I honestly, I'm with you. I'm ready to move on. I don't see the Pels, even though, I was hoping for six or seven games in this series. I don't want to see four more games of this. Let's just go in and close it out. Two more games. 
I don't want to see it. I will give. I I I do hope that that the Pels can at least secure one win. I want them to do that because I like them enough at the top of the season that they can at least do that. But to sit through another four games, no, I will give you another three. Give you another three. <laughs> okay. All right. So what's happening tonight? I know the New York Knicks and the Philadelphia 76ers. Hey, the Sixers are looking to at least get a win because they felt robbed, right, last game? Yes. Can they get a victory at home? They need it desperately. Yeah, I think they can. At home, I think they can do it, yes. Yes, I think they can. And then, did they have like two days rest or was it one? Uh, I don't know. They had enough. They should be hungry enough to get back on the court, especially after that sour ahead. taste. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think they can I think they can I think they can take home game three. I think so. I think so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then of course we got um what we got? Uh oh my god. We got the Milwaukee Bucks and the Indiana Pacers. That's another series. Can that one just hurry up and get over with? Even though they're tied one one, who gets a victory tonight? I uh, yeah. Anybody. I just didn't. Whoever, <laughs> whoever, whoever, I'm okay. okay. Whoever, whoever, whoever. I'll tell you one thing. After Tyrese Halliburton made those comments about the Bucks fan base and being all quiet, like 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 a church mouse, I know the, the uh, fans in Indiana better bring it. I, I bet you, I bet you they better. You know what I think it is? I think it's the white T-shirts. I don't like it because actually the white T-shirts for the Oklahoma City fan base last night looks like cardboard cutouts. I don't like the white T-shirts, NBA. <laughs> don't do it. Uh-huh. Don't do it. It's giving it's giving me bubble twenty twenty. I don't like it. I don't like it. No white t shirt. None. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing though. With that, okay. But what does it say about the fan base that they will all wear them? Because you know, you try that in Los Angeles. Everybody wanna show off that Chanel, that Louis Vuitton, I don't see yeah, you know, the joke. high end. They're not wearing no white t shirts unless they're in the three hundred section. The the joke would be on the Lakers and the Clippers if they think anybody in LA gonna wear that out. And that's that's the cool part about it is that since I am from LA, I wouldn't put the T-shirt on either. <laughs> <laughs> we don't wear that out. Come on, you're right. You'll be up there in the nosebleeds. Well, you can't even see it anyway because it's dark. But sitting yeah. here courtside, never. It will uh-uh. never happen. No, no. You might get a few, but you ain't know. Everybody want to show up their high end. So what I'm saying is, what does it say about the fan base, about the blue collar fan base that they're all willing to buy into their team and support them, whether or not they look like cardboard cardboard cutouts or what? I think it's a nice I think it's a nice touch for the arena. I do. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm a little tainted. Okay, that's okay. I can I can I can rest. Then I'm a little tainted because we would never be that uniform in LA. I got it. Okay, that makes <laughs> never, sense. never. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, maybe that's why I'm so like done with it. Like, ew, who does that? We don't, <laughs> but they do. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, so let's let's move on to the LA Denver Nuggets game. I'll tell you one thing. I, the Lakers better win tonight. <sighs> they. If they do not win game three, game three, right? Yes. In L.A., mm-hmm. that's going to be horrible. It's going to be awful. It's going to be awful. They cannot get swept again by the Nuggets. They can't do it. They can't do it. Can't do it. Not round yeah. one. Not no. swept. Now, y'all going, the Lakers are going home, but not swept. Mm-mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, you know, I – I do believe, I agree with you, the Lakers are going home in this series, but just think about it. A team beat you 10 times in a row, and they're looking to beat you 11 and 12 in a row. At at what point do you just say, okay, I'm taking this game into my own hands? Come on, LeBron. Come on, AD. You guys stormed out of the postgame conference like you were just so upset. Let's see that anger on the court. Oh, it was awful sportsmanship. It was it was awful sportsmanship. When AD did it, I said, AD, if you don't go sit back down, stop doing it. Yeah, don't, throw a yeah. Tantrum. don't do that. Don't drop the mic. That was not a mic drop worthy perform- ending of a game for you to do that. <laughs> I didn't, he, didn't let, he didn't lay the mic down. He dropped the mic. What? Yes. How you don't yes, drop the mic did. in the law. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And 
You can't do it. Didn't look good. I didn't like no. it. No, I, I know you're upset, and I'm not. I wish you would just say, you know, y'all, I'm upset. I want somebody just to say it. Can one of the players just say, y'all, mad about that? Can they mm-hmm. say that? <laughs> like, be honest, but don't mic drop. He he made the shot. Drop the mic. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was ugly don't do that again Anthony Davis but that's the thing Anthony Davis and LeBron James are bringing it they are bringing it they brought it in game one they brought it again in game two the problem is that when the fourth quarter comes they are exhausted well that shouldn't be the case in LA lower elevation right we should see them playing at least 46 minutes tonight no can the game plan be Velo, Rui, Reeves, can y'all at least do all that you can do in, in the first quarter? So then that means that I can reserve and maybe three, two, three, and four, AD and uh, LeBron James can take it over. Because we need that. We need all of that energy that they give us in the first and second quarter. We need that to last to the, third, to the fourth quarter. And what we've seen for the past two games of this series, that that ain't the case. So I'm going to need – them to do better because if they gas out at home in game three you know what why don't we just make a set of new precedents and the nba say you know what for the lakers three games is enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah three games is enough so no I, I don't want to see it not tonight it can't happen tonight they have to win tonight tonight is a must win for the lakers Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Backs against the wall. Check it out, though, Coach Michael Malone. Like, you always, you're going to get, what did you say? You're going to get some sound bites from Michael Malone. You, you're you're going to get, get it. it. Yeah, so check it out. He said, um, you know, we have some some schemes and some sets that we haven't even unveiled yet. <laughs> Meanwhile, Coach Darvin Ham is just throwing everything at the wall. The kitchen sink, spaghetti, whatever he can think of. And Coach Michael Malone, like, yeah, we got some stuff in our back pocket. We haven't even showed yet. Lakers ain't ready. They ain't ready. We haven't even revealed. And guess what? They may not even need to. And they may not even need to in this series. Actually, that was a message not only for the Lakers, but for whoever else is coming behind them. That, my, that coach, Michael Malone, is he, he my guy. That's my guy. He's like, no, that's for the Lakers and other teams. That's for you, too. <laughs> I love it. Y'all love think it. y'all oh. watching film on us for this series? You ain't even seen what we got. Ooh, I love it. 